basically it's a document storage, it's analytics, and it has a lot of sales elements. Should I do just one product or two yes. products or three products? As, <laughs> as many as you want. In this dashboard, you have all the events types and all the upcomings, right? This is our event actually after and book me through this. What happens to the emails? So webhooks allow you to uh, connect with a lot of other systems. Mm -hmm. This is brilliant. What happened with that link? You know, where the visits, you know, the, how, how much time did people spend on the slides and stuff? I really enjoy doing this because you learn quite a lot. All right. Uh, another good video coming up. So this time we are gonna, we are having Venus from ShareDoc View. Great to have you here. And um, my first question, I have a, I have it usually immediately there. Uh, what is it that your uh, startup or a company does? You know, what what, what it does? Yeah, so it's uh, simply it's a SaaS that allows anyone to upload a document on ShareW.com and then share different links on different marketing channels so that you can find out who is viewing, downloading your documents, also get leads email leads you can get them verified as well and um there's a lot of things that we can do actually like uh, you can brand it like doc.yourdomain.com with a custom domain with c name we actually don't know any competitor who does that and you can find out how much time people spend on your slides or on your pages so you can figure out where people drop off so there's just you know a, a ton of features so the idea is like don't send an attachment because once you send mm -hmm. it out, you have no idea what people have done with the attachment. Yeah. Send a document link. Okay, cool. so it's basically the same that uh, when you're using HubSpot's uh, the email tracker, it's kind of like you know it lets you know when somebody's been opening your uh, emails, and that way you can you have more data to know that okay, these guys are either making the decision or at least they've seen it, and then you can continue talking with them. So basically, the same idea, but just with uh, Google Slides or PowerPoints or, or et cetera. PDFs, yeah. PDFs, yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually had people switching over from HubSpot to us, and they told us that basically there's a lot of features that HubSpot was missing mm -hmm. on a document sharing piece. I remember last time I tried it, basically you actually had to specify the email of a person you were going to share it with, but sometimes you don't have the email of the people you want to get their emails, actually. You share it on your LinkedIn or whatever under an email campaign and it gets forwarded more people can be added so yeah because you know as you know AppSpot does a lot of things so i guess they are not able to go as deep into into each thing that they do mm -hmm. so if you think about your SaaS platform basically it's a document storage it's analytics and also it has a lot of sales elements right you can embed a form or something so that you can collect Emails yeah, and so we don't have forms yet, but we do have embed. So you can embed a, a presentation like SlideShare used to offer. That's another tool that has kind of like gone away because it was told to script. And so if you are trying to embed a presentation where you want to get lead generation, ShareDoc View Run has a really good option. Actually, don't know other good options out there for that because Doxin doesn't do it, and Google Slides does not really allow any lead generation. So in terms of embedding, definitely one of the best solutions out there. And then. Yeah, the other thing is the CNAME custom domain. So being able to have like docs.yourdomain.com basically takes our growth engine away and gives it to your company because anytime people have looked at your document, they could be like, wait, what does this company do? Let me go check their their website. You support, you mentioned PDFs and, and uh, slides and so forth. It kind of sounds like a sales tool, right? I think it's most useful when yeah. it comes to sales. So. So, ha like, has it been used by other, you know, types of uh, people, professionals, or is it mainly sales? Yeah, we've seen, like, kind of all sorts of people, like, uh, consultants, trainers, uh, some lawyers, some VCs, um, you know, obviously some founders, basically anyone that is sharing, uh, even some people in the educational field, anyone that will know who is accessing their documents, wants to have more control, but doesn't want to just send an attachment. I mean, it's a pretty much a vanilla use case, so it's, uh, it's definitely something that could be applied to most, but definitely we are focusing more on the lead generation piece, you know, the sales enablement, uh, marketing sales, uh, that of use cases. Great, great. Uh, one, one thing that, uh, well, maybe you could tell us, how did you come up with the idea? How did you oh, get- Oh, I was just about yeah, to ask that yeah. one, yeah. How did you get started, like, 
and then, of course a little bit about yeah, yourself first of all, maybe i should say like kind of yeah about myself i was born and raised here in southern italy and i would really change my life was actually uh finishing my master at helsinki kappa oh nice so, oh, so that's why you did yeah the, yeah that's why you said yeah. finish fine finish yeah yeah, nice. and then I became yeah, which is self into economics, which then became Alto University for the non Finnish people, and then yeah, I really wanted to work in Nokia, so we did a business project with Nokia, and um, mm-hmm. we won that, and then I applied to three jobs in Nokia and got all three because I was a freak about any kind of mobile phones and Nokia technologies. So I worked with Nokia for seven years in Finland, Germany, China, ended up in California for five years. And then I was trying to move from device, hardware, product management to software because I knew it was going to be impossible to build my own phone company, but it was going to be more possible to build my own software company. And um, yeah, then we basically transitioned quickly to Microsoft after the acquisition, but I was you know, kind of with my green card ready to go and, and kind of start the entrepreneurial journey. You know, typical first startup, uh, there were a lot of mistakes. We, we built something in the uh, schools, university. Uh, education system which just doesn't have enough money going around and afterwards we just decided to kind of build stuff that you know for instance we've seen maybe already working uh in the u.s but maybe it was too expensive you know i had too many features it was too expensive you know actually the way share of you came about is that i did a, a big analysis on on docsend and alternatives to docsend i published it on my linkedin where now i have about twenty thousand connections and, and one guy, uh, he's Bulgarian, but he's been living in Mexico for 20 years. He has a development uh, outsourcing firm. He said, hey, cool, you know, kind of cool analysis. Why don't we build something better together? I said, let's call, you know, I used to live in Mexico as well. I did a little exchange program there. We called, we really hit it off, and we kept building everything uh, remotely online. Then COVID hit, so we incorporated a company with, with Stripe Atlas. And, and just kept going from there. And I was just seeing, yeah, we just got our first 5,000 users. We decided not to want to raise kind of any investments or whether from angels or venture companies or whatever. Just want to keep growing the company. And yeah, that's, that's kind of like the story of how it started, let's say, and, and about me. Awesome. That sounds, that, that's really interesting. So basically you bootstrapped it, right? You used your own funds to yeah. start the company. So, so uh, you don't do any any coding, right? It's your partner and his company that does that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Exactly. A- yeah. And where did you incorporate your company? Uh, with Stripe Atlas, which is only available in Delaware. And uh, yeah, that's because you know he was based in Mexico. I'm actually both uh, Italian-American citizen. And I, at the end of the day, I think that if you want to build a company to sell globally, yeah, I think, you know, Delaware and, and Stripe Atlas is one of the best options out there. Yeah. You know, so people don't have to travel to a, to a specific location. I think also if you ended up, end up want, want to sell the company, then, you know, again, probably best location, I would say. But yeah, happy to hear your thoughts if you have any other thoughts around the other locations. No, that, for, no for, I think uh, you made a good lower. decision for sure. Good decision. I never heard yeah, about Delaware Stripe kind of like Atlas. It. I don't know if you, Mikhail, heard about Stripe Atlas. I have. I have. I have. I have. And uh, I was actually planning to use it last year, uh, but you know, because we were planning to to go to the US, uh, Stripe Atlas is really a convenient tool to to uh, create your company. And obviously, yeah, Delaware is the. I think they have the only Delaware is the only. Uh, area that they that is possible to do yeah but uh, uh, yeah no, they create really the smart. entity for you right they create the entity for you and then like what about like bookkeeping yeah. and all the other junk that you have to take care of do they do that i think they have some other you know they, they have some other uh, providers that they can recommend yeah. you if you want to use them otherwise you can find your own of course like uh i think there's a lot more providers in the of u.s course. than 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 persons i also had some friends who Worked with Estonia, which was also good for uh, you know remote people and people building software for all over the world. But Estonia is a much smaller country, so the the amount of service providers is a little you know more so smaller, per like three hundred times smaller, right? If you just consider the population. Uh, but yeah, that's also another kind of interesting place for sure. I mean, unfortunately, I we we also I don't know if I if you saw this on my profile, but as I kind of got back here to Italy couple of developers approach me to say, yeah, why don't we build something? You know, we don't want to just get a job. We want to build something cool. And 
we built uh, Calendly book, which is basically a, a competitor of Calendly. Mm -hmm. The way we differentiate right now is not just being four times cheaper. You know, we started selling at like two dollars per month instead of eight dollars per month. But also, we we've done some, for instance, in integrations with uh, with web books uh, that I'm not even sure it's, it's available. Uh, we currently we have the affiliate program, so people can actually earn when when other people join. Uh, you can use Stripe and charge for your time for free. So, with that team was based in Italy. We actually incorporated Italy because you know, everyone was in Italy. Um, but the only good thing of like, you know, incorporating Italy is that if you incorporate in Southern Italy, there's some European funds. Uh, as Southern Italy is still consider a poorer part of Europe, and well, it is. Um, and and so that's that's one good thing about it of incorporating in, in Southern Italy. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. So you said that you have now like 5,000 customers, users right now in this yeah. uh, shared app yeah, view. Yeah, what? so shared app view about 5,000 on, on Calend book about 3,000. And we've been recently more and more, we've been able to like kind of cross sell in between, even though it's still, still small amounts. But yeah, on the other side, like I've been, I've been back in Europe for a bit. And of course, so, you know, I own my own real estate. I don't have to pay a 4K rent in San Francisco. Mm, that's convenient. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, they were a lot bigger, and and so it's just like the timeline, the time horizon. It's, it's much more about doing something from now to ten years and, and doing with our own strength, and uh, yeah, looking in the long term and and, and doing kind of like we want it. Um, really, yeah, that is really smart. Um, yeah, right now a lot of people they are just when they have a good idea, they just try to find angel investors, and then that just that is very uh, time consuming and also. You know, when you are playing with others' money, you know, you don't have that same kind of a freedom anymore. So that's very smart to do it. So what is your, because, you know, especially like SaaS companies like this one, uh, usually getting users, it's kind of a, like a pretty tough task because just yeah. uh, the big competitors, they're just putting so much money in it. And, then, and so what was your growth hack? How did you get your first, let's say, 1,000? users and and is there tips that you want to share yeah we just kind of realized that you know uh when you just start off you don't have your own strength in terms of sales and marketing so there's a lot of other partners that just are dedicated to sell other people's software and so we worked with a with a bunch of companies that that sell software for others even taking like a, a big percentage in fact we don't have a problem in giving like a big percentages to partners uh, as long as they help us grow yeah yeah um yeah that's that's what we've done you know the we've done all sorts of stuff where it's like uh even at the beginning uh still doing some of the lifetime deals that really helps you get first users that improve your platform and you know some of the, these users have upgraded to for instance our custom domain which is only for monthly and yearly subscribers and i mean it's, it's still it's still revenue plus you know i'm just all up constantly looking for new distributors so for instance i was a mobile congress in barcelona in february i think kind of like the, the only conference i went to this year because there's a lot of distributors that distribute phones computers and now also software and so yeah really trying to rely on partners that dedicate themselves to selling software and uh, when you're while about, you build revenue and 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 when you're talking about partners they are basically affiliates like it's affiliate marketers or they are actual I think, like I agencies think they're more distrib distributors it. because i think uh, affiliate your responsibility stops at the sign up you just bring people to the sign yeah. up and then that's it but i think distributor is who is actually taking care of the customer as well and so forth right but vince please correct me if i'm wrong or at least they even take care of payment okay so you know they actually sell for you and then they will give you whatever they make with your software right so you know some of these companies they make like you know over 100 million uh, just selling software another one i'm talking to of course it's much bigger it's like you know, they do like tens of billions but of course the bigger the, the distributor the more time it will take for you to get in their channel. Um, and so we're like progressively moving upstream. But uh, yeah, I was just like, actually just post the LinkedIn video about how I'm analyzing all this uh, channel ecosystem software uh, solutions, which is basically companies that work in this channel ecosystem. For instance, one, um, it's called Partner Optimizer. I actually really knew them, already spoke to them, and they have a huge list of potential partners you can speak to. Uh, and try to find deals so that uh, you can you can you can work with them. So I, I'm really gonna kind of try to stay 
more and more focused on that. Meanwhile, of course, we try to build our own uh, kind of growth system and, and predictable like uh, customer acquisition, acquisition systems. We actually have built with one of the first developers I ever worked with a mail merge on Gmail. Uh, we just released it. It's called salesportsa.com. Still early, but we're actually going to release a feature that I've never seen anyone having, which is batching. So you can, for instance, set up like, you know, 6,000 emails to go in the next month, uh, 200 emails a day, and you just click once, and the emails will also be personalized if you have the name and so on, and they will go from your Gmail into their inbox. We also uh, used Mail Merge quite much uh, some years back. And now we use Lemlist, which is even, well, that is a, like a, a fantastic tool. So if you haven't checked it out, check that out. It's, uh, it's a French startup and uh, the best best one of those one-to-one email uh, outreach tools that is right now. Does, it, does Do the emails go out from your Gmail or yeah. where, or do they go out from their own No, no, your Gmail. Your, your Gmail. You, okay. you uh, integrate your uh, Google work, uh, Workspace with, with them and uh, they use your uh, account to, to do it. And then, you, you know, if you're opening a new one, like if you have a new account, a new, new uh, domain, you can use their Lemworm, which is the, the tool that they use to warm it up your their, uh, your Gmail so that you know, your stuff can actually go to the primary inbox and, you know, skip all these filtering uh, tools, what, what Microsoft and Google usually have in their email providers. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I heard about them. I was definitely followed their their CEO on LinkedIn, but I never actually got, got to try them, so maybe I should at some point. We, we use it a lot. It's a fantastic tool. We, with all of our customers, we use it, so and I can really recommend it. Okay. And what do you guys do, by the way? You <laughs> Is this a good time to tell? Uh, of <laughs> course, yeah. of course, of course. We jumped right in. We jumped right in. And uh, by the way, I really I really enjoy doing this because you learn quite a lot. So, you know, thanks for the tips as well. I already put Partner Optimizer on and Stripe Atlas and whatnot. So this is really useful. But uh, <laughs> cool. basically, we are both in marketing and maybe Mikhail can tell about his company a little bit, but basically what I do is I have a growth a marketing agency in Finland and I also have multiple startups where I'm involved and trying to do exactly what you do. So this is, uh, there is maybe a selfish reason for doing these interviews as well so that we can learn and network and so forth. But that's pretty much about me. What about you, Mikhail? Yeah, the same thing. Uh, we also have a growth uh, agency and uh, and whereas Ar- Artem is more into technical stuff and, and you know coding parts and all that we are more in, in B2B sales and, and you know digital marketing parts we do we do like uh, like low code uh, solutions obviously but yeah we are more in the uh, non-technical parts more inventing how to how to create new funnels for for our clients and and you know usually we provide b2b clients that's the biggest part what are your your websites growthland.co growth growthland.co yeah growthland yeah, yeah. and mine there's that we are we are located in estonia and artems is uh, in finland yeah and uh, i'll send my link in the chat because it's a little bit more it's harder i think to type Danilian's Ventures. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I've seen this before. Or looking at yeah. yeah. And uh, do you have any questions for me or should I ask questions? No, 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 no. This is, <laughs> no, we can quite, continue quite, with your stuff. Yeah, so uh, I think at this point it'll be awesome if maybe you could uh, demo your product a little bit because the, the idea is that we want people to learn about your product, learn about you, your company, and many times it's really hard to get a grasp on like how does it really work. So maybe if you could demo it, that'd be lovely. Should I do just one product or two <laughs> products or three products? As <laughs> as many as you want, as many as you want. You know, it's 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 all good. We will have to uh, know yeah, all of your products. Okay, yours. yeah, I'll, I'll try to be quick. And luckily, they're not like you know they're not hard to use. At least that's what we hope. And then they are kind of like not complicated in terms of what what they do 
So this is to show you again, you know, more sales with powerful doc links. You can log in with uh, kind of your Gmail, uh, LinkedIn, or just a normal email. This was, for instance, a brochure uh, of a of a of a sorry of a company that I was looking at their website. There, it's fine that they open like this. Their brochure open like this, right? So in this case, you see there's no branding, no lead generation. I could just download it, and that's it. But if you use instead Sharedog View and you upload it here, then you can do all sorts of stuff with this document once it, once it's on the platform. You could say, you know, anyone can view it, uh, but not download or actually let people download it by way of ask for an email to view it or actually, you know, ask for an email to download it. This is actually a feature that I've never seen before uh, from others. And then you can ask people even to verify the email get notifications for the download. You can select a watermark or not. If the document is confidential, you can put a password or you can say, you know, I'm just sharing it with Artem and, and Mikael. Yeah. And then you can do these campaigns like you can call it like LinkedIn. So you know that it's, it's going over on LinkedIn. Now you have this link. And if I open an incognito window, I'm going to show you kind of like what happens, you know, for other people. They will see the document right away. But then if they want to if they want to uh, download it, they will have this uh, landing page and help to, you know, give your email. We actually have also uh, Google one tap sign in. This only works where you're not in incognito window and you're uh, kind of signed up in there. But so now you'll actually be able to see like kind of, you know, uh, what's what, what happened with that link, you know, where the visits, you know, the, how, how much time did people spend on the slides and stuff. Can you see what slides? Can you see what slides did they, did yeah. they actually, you know, view? Ah, okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you'll be able to see like uh, how much time was spent. Yeah, so in the, first ah, instance, okay, the, the okay. second time I, I hit it, you know, because it uh, was having troubles loading. Then you see I actually ended up going on, on slide four and I didn't watch the whole presentation. So you can see people that didn't watch it all. And then as you get this uh, email leads, you we have integration with 5000 apps via zapier so you can kick off yeah, to my was, email via i was actually about to ask that do you have a zapier uh connection possibility yeah. but yeah you know we still have this great yeah so um with gmail with mail team with slack you know really any, anything you name it then we have also reports so that you can see like okay which uh documents are being uh downloaded or visited the most and even like which campaigns you can add your team and then, you know, if you're on Gmail, you can open shut off you anywhere with the, with the Chrome extension you can download for free. And then finally, in terms of branding, you can add the watermark for, for a document. You can change the branding in this part, top left. So it almost becomes like a white label software. And even the logo the, can take you to your website for more leads and more generation, more visitors. And you can change the color of this part. It's, the green part now cool pictures so, by so the, that way, uh, sure. the pro team is that a, is that the pro team uh plan you have so that that allows you to change uh, yeah actually this was like well. the individual this was the individual plan because the the pro team will have actually five uh team members and you can yeah. have shared team folders or, or private ones and then what what we have which is also really interesting for for larger companies we typically work with larger companies but we've also added a few cool customers that have few employees but they really wanted to see me so you could have like docs dot you know what's your domain like uh danilis danilis dot ventures yeah, right? yeah. or docs dot growland dot co and that basically steals our growth engine because we actually been growing you know this is definitely like uh we chose a product that has a virality and a mm -hmm. k factor what they call it so it just keeps on growing on its own but uh yeah that's that's pretty much about uh shared of you so why it's so cheap so this is the this is the thing you know this is suspiciously yeah. uh cheap what's going on yeah it seems like to, a great pro product yeah to be honest it's it's uh you know it's how we started it right we definitely spoke many times about pricing with, with our with my co-founder we really want to make it like really a no-brainer to do but also you know if you look at like canva pricing like canva offers like so much stuff right yeah. and it's like you you need to be able to compete uh with with them as well right so uh, 
the whole point why we started is that we felt the, the pricing of our competitors in the US was too high. We think there's like, you know, 5 billion people connected to the internet. So the opportunity is just larger. And yeah, that's why we're keeping the prices lower. The price gets okay. higher for custom domain. It does depend on the customer, but you know, it, it's definitely higher than, than, than here. And, and really we do it like a, we speak to each customer to figure out what, depending really how many employees they have. Um, but we kind of want to make this a no-brainer for people, right? Yeah, I mean, like, exactly. Uh, what happens to the emails that people, you know, if, if you're putting it that they need to give your email to, to have a possibility to download it? So what happens to the emails? Do you collect them or are... Is there a database for yeah, the emails? The emails go definitely, you know, go in the turtle group system, but you know, they are available for any any users here on the leads area. So okay. of course, uh, you know, they, they can contact. We need to be able still to contact them, you know, our, our lawyer advices because if there is anything like an issue with the system, some suspicious links, we need to be able to to interact with also leads that have been added to our platform. Yeah. Uh but but really like each you know, each user has its own leads and and then with the integration sends them to their own other systems and you know keeps the gets the marketing automations going. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I also noticed that on your enterprise plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah go sorry, ahead. Sorry, sorry, Vince. Yeah. So on your enterprise yeah. plan, you mentioned that uh, there is a dedicated server, and that kind of seems a little bit odd. Uh, so. Um, dedicated servers so basically uh, for your enterprise customers you have a dedicated server so that there are no other customers on that server so for for privacy reasons or for resource allocation yeah. like what's the deal behind that yeah for privacy reasons also because when we set up CNAME which is quite kind of complicated and a bit manual still uh, we can easily like just assign an, a separate instance on AWS and so some larger customer asked us that you know, they just want like all their data in one place, but they should be accessible by them as well at the AWS level. And so that's why we have that. Ah, okay. So you, you deploy your solution on customer's infrastructure, right? Or on a separate AWS okay. instance, which can be accessed by the specific customers okay. if they want to have like a deeper level of integration. Okay. 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 That's that's um, yeah. that's really really interesting. Uh, also, if I may ask some nerdy questions, so like, what is your tech yeah. stack? Like, what did you use to power the SaaS service? I know definitely we're using AWS in the background, and then we're using UPS in the in the front end. Okay, but that's what I remember off the top of my head. I do have a tech stack document somewhere for this. No, don't the first worry, you don't I, have to pull I, up I your tech, the, you know, tech stack finally, document. Finally, we have a non-tech uh, founder in this uh, podcast uh, because we usually always have the tech tech people. Uh, thanks, Artem. Yeah, so, so, we can, was, so I can geek getting, out getting... with them, but you know, now it's yeah, yeah, and that, then you know, I usually zoom out just because I don't, I don't, you know, yeah. I understand some, <laughs> but. As, as I'm not a developer, I really, you know, yeah, uh, I always have a hard time with this one. So, ah, uh, cool, that, cool, you know, that's yes, yes, <laughs> <in Finnish>. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So, if you want, I can show you this very quickly. Please do, Calend book, uh, Cal Calendly competitor. Basically, you know, as you see, one of the insights that we have, we have to have less clicks. You know, whenever I was using Calendly or other similar solutions, I was always doing too many clicks. In this dashboard, you have all the events types and all the upcomings, right? This is our event actually after and booked me through this. And it worked and it was great. Uh, thank God I went and read the notes because I thought I was going to have to join at Zoom. I was so tired. And uh, of course, you know, if you want to change anything here, you can. We just added like, uh, you know, we have Zoom, uh, the app uh, integration. You can redirect to your own domain. We just added Stripe. So actually, if even free users can charge for their time. For few users, we just add a euro or dollar extra just uh, to make it, uh, you know, then premium customers don't have that dollar extra by, from our side. Of course, you can ask questions, you know, set up the days and so on. Uh, that's pretty standard. Um, and then we get, we allow up to 10 calendar connections. Right now, only Google is on the Google accounts, but soon like Outlook and so actually also standard emails. And then actually Calendbook has got a lot in terms of integration. So we mentioned Stripe, uh, Zoom, Zapier, which we already spoke about it, and then Webbooks. So Webhooks allow you to uh, connect with a lot of other systems mm -hmm. that actually tend to be a little cheaper than, than Zapier. They're a little more geeky as well. 
but potentially even more powerful. And then, of course, you can invite your team if you get more licenses. Uh, or, of course, you can embed into um, your website. We actually recently went live on uh, on Wix, and it's actually like quite interesting uh, to be there. It's definitely a great platform for us. We we just launched, but you know, it's just an easy way to add Calendar Book to your Wix website. And the other really cool thing about Calendar Book is that we have like really a, a like I think now it's over three hundred and thirty people that are voting on our uh, public roadmap. And so they're really telling us what to do. So really, for instance, in terms of some of the stuff we've done, the questions, we had a lot of votes on that, uh, the webbooks, the Zoom integration. So we the Stripe, of course. I really like how you use uh, Trello as, as you know, showing publicly your uh, roadmap. And this is, you know, all, all the people who are thinking about growth hacking, uh, this is one very good example on how to create the social uh engagements in, in a way that you actually get your users to participate and i've actually never seen anyone use trello as a, as a open roadmap stuff this is brilliant very very smart i remember this lady from front app uh i actually met her in san francisco they they got a great SaaS and they made the roadmap public on trello so i actually saw it from oh. her and I was Smart. like, we've done it for all of our products. Yeah. Actually, now she's using uh, AHA Ideas. It's a dedicated company. To be honest, I still prefer Trello, you know, because it's a lot more visual. Oh. I think uh, one day when we have enough extra resources to throw, I would love to build a, a dedicated version for this that maybe it's like completely integrated into our website so people don't have to get out to Trello or sign up for a different thing. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of, that's it for now in terms of, in terms of calendar book. And then, you know, in terms of like for uh, sports, it's still like kind of relatively young, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely there. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever use like Streak or Streak or any other of this uh, yeah, Chrome extension. So basically the idea is that uh, I was really, I really was spending like too much time in terms of uh, importing and exporting um different information. So what was happening here was, was the following. Um, so let's do like a test, right? And maybe let's go and uh, categorize some, some spam emails to, to write to spammers. Um, so what Salesforce is cool is that you, the CRM is really on, on a Google sheet. So you don't have to import, export, and you could just copy paste. Uh, emails in there. The only thing is that right now there's a little catch up. Oh, investor intro. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not really interested. I will add them to the spam. So, <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, so, we add this in here, right? It's going to be added to our uh, CRM. There you go, right? I could decide to, like, hey, you know what? Let me select this guy for like an, an email that I want to send, you know, maybe I could tell them, Hey, you are actually in my spam folder. Are you, are you legit or not? I'm just building a, 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 a use case for this, but of course it's, it's not the best. Um, just also to use data that probably we don't really care about. So, and then let's say once you have two people, you could actually start a mail merge, right? So we already selected the people because we already selected this, this boxes. And then after you select the people, you could say like, you know, uh, you went in spam. Hi, you went in my spam folder. So then I have a preview. And then, you know, I could like email these guys. And I can either do it in, you know, 10 minutes or two hours, 24 hours. And soon it's going to be available also this batching so that if you have like a lot of emails, you can say send like 50 emails every 60 hours or something. And, you know, that, that call out to send like up to in the next 30 days. So one time click and it's done for next 30 days. And yeah, of course you can add different variables, right? From, from this Google sheet. If you add them, if you want to add their names or, or like whatever else. Yeah, for instance show you with the name 
here. Um, so that will give us a new preview with the name IMD, IIT Global Network. And also what we added right now is that we have like a chat GPT integration so that it's going to provide you a better uh, subject. And I think you bet, I'm not sure if you have the better body. Uh, oh, I have to pay for it. It's a premium feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the premium feature because as you know, like chat GPT stuff is expensive. So yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah, it's, so yeah, it's but not, it's, it's like free yeah. to use it in this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, a lot of people yeah, exactly. they think that because you know, for consumers, you know, you can get the free version as well, but they don't realize that ChatGPT is actually uh, the GPT is expensive when you are using it as yeah. part of. Uh, actually, I'm glad I was demoing this tools. because while demoing this, I realized that probably we want a page in between that explains, hey, you know, this feature is premium because ChatGPT is expensive. So if you want, yeah. to pay for it here. Uh, but the, as you see, this is still rough around the edge. It's still a kind of V1 of, of the product. Uh, but, you know, we actually, what was cool is that we actually built this kind of like for our own use because we just, you know, we realized we we're going to spend a lot more money sending a lot of cold emails to other people's tools. So we said, let's build a tool that we're actually going to like really use ourselves. Um, and so now with batching, we're definitely going to gonna use it more. Uh, but yeah, of course, we're making it available to to other professionals and, and small companies that just need to get started with their with their lead generation. So and, and communicating to their leads. So a question that I had, uh, you know, regarding all these three products, who is in charge of your UX and UI? That's definitely an area that you know leaves a lot to be decided, especially for this last one. Uh, we are definitely like super super scrappy. We also do believe that it's just better to like get it out get get the work done get get the tech done well and even like verify the business although the business we really it's it's kind of like we go on stuff that we know people are using and then we just try to so definitely this side it's it's an it's an area that uh, you know as we have more resources maybe even to share across this maybe we could have a dedicated designer that works across three different products maybe even tries to integrate them a little bit cross sell them more so uh, we basically the answer is like we don't really have anyone. The front end or it's better. One of the our front end developers has been really like learning a lot via this uh, uxcel.com. It's like little Duolingo for UX people. I, I think share of view is like okay, but still definitely could could use some help. And then yeah, some sports definitely needs a lot of work. So Achilles Achilles heel spotted. Yeah. So I, I of course <laughs> I. Uh... I didn't mean anything by it. I just wanted to. I just wanted to understand. You know, how do you approach user experience? Because you are kind of creating products for yourself in a sense, right? Like you are the user. You are using it. So I was just wondering. You know, how do you do the the UX UI? But uh, obviously, obviously, once you have more resources, I think it kind of makes sense. But one thing that came to my mind, um, because your, some of your products are very inexpensive, right? Have you considered having a lifetime price? Like, right? Like you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, we had lot, lifetime prices uh, for all the you know, some of the partners that sell through lifetime prices. So, so yeah, we we've done that as well. And then we constantly like keep changing prices and increasing and and so on. So we're experimenting all sorts of things with pricing. Actually, the the first little book I wrote is not very good, but it was about pricing, SaaS pricing. And um, definitely changing pricing and trying different strategies is at the core of what I believe. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, have you done any kind of like SEO optimization for your products? Because in many cases, that is a pretty good way to get customers. Yeah, we've done probably shared of view more because we have a blog, sharedofview.com uh, slash blog, where there is like, uh, we've been featuring a lot of like LinkedIn top influencers. And I'm seeing that there's some decent amount of traffic coming from some of these guys that are like uh, a lot of followers. Maybe they're highly searched on, on Google and um, actually check one of them. So yeah, we've, we've done definitely definitely some, some of this, but I think what, one of the things I'm looking at and potentially it could be another product is that I'm seeing, I don't know what you guys think about it. Maybe I'll ask you guys, is there an opportunity? That's what I'm wondering about of building a product that helps you uh, automatically in a smart way, build a lot of blog posts with AI um, and just get them out. Of course, maybe a human will go and check and improve, uh, but that's something I'm wondering about. I wonder if you guys think there's an opportunity there. 
there is an opportunity and most likely there's going to be a lot of these kind of tools coming out yeah. real fast. Uh, Jasper or AI uh, was one of the first ones that we're kind of allowing to do that. Uh, they have their own AI. AI. Uh, they are not using uh, to GBT. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is that is a that is a uh, thing that you should definitely get into. Yeah, if, it's if a gold rush. Because kind that's of. Be a big thing. Everybody is trying to yeah. make one. Uh, I really like koala.sh uh, for content creation. And the reason for that is that it actually uses um, um, SERP data from Google to kind of understand the competitors for the keywords you're trying to rank for. And uh, Koala also has APIs, so you could actually automate like the whole thing. Uh, Koala also has access to GPT-4 via API, so you can use GPT-4 to create uh, optimized content. And uh, it's very much um, geared towards SEO, so there are a lot of features good for SEO. Uh, Koala said that they use GPT-4, but is that is that possible right yeah, now? Yeah, I yeah. Think it's, yeah uh, some companies, some that, companies that... have access to GPT-4. Well, see, they they already do have the access to the four. Yeah. Uh, in the playground, right? Okay, cool. Since you traveled the world, worked in different places, uh, you know, why did you choose to go back to Italy? Yeah, that was actually I I think I didn't go to yeah food <laughs> like family yeah. food like yeah. number one. Yeah. But yeah, definitely just like a lot of, you know, I was 20 years away because so I was in Rome for three years in, in an international high school, five years in Milan, 12 years abroad. So that makes it 20 years. So after 20 years, I really missed it. So uh, I got my U.S. citizenship and I said, you know, let me go check out how, how Italy looks. So I felt like a foreigner back here in Italy. And then you know, I think the weather is great. It's, it's been a little too hot. Last couple of summers, even hit 44, so I was about to melt, but. Aside from that, the weather is great over, you know, it's like very sunny. It's one of the sunniest parts of Europe. It's actually very safe, you know, contrary to what maybe some people think, you know, Southern Italy Mafia. Actually, most of the criminals, they're like doing macro stuff. They're doing like bank heists. And, you know, after La Casa di Papel, we're all behind, we're all behind bank heists. We're, we're like all, all fans of those. So, <laughs> so it's very safe as well. Great weather, great food. Of course, for me, it was family. You know, even just speaking my own language when I go out and just when I go get a coffee here, it's just absolutely mind blowing. Even for my yeah. guests, actually, now I have a guest from London uh, that is like joining as a LLSD SDR, so we're doing like some training here. And 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 you know, having I have a huge house, it's almost like 400 square meters. That would have costed like tens of millions, I guess, in California, <laughs> but it was yeah. a lot cheaper here. Um, so it really like I saw a lot of really big pluses in terms of being back. But and I I feel bad in a way, but you know mentally now I feel like I'm in some tech conference right now with you guys, you know, like uh, and it's awesome. So we're always all here connected. I recently got the uh, gigabit, uh, uh, how do you call internet it? connection, internet connection, fiber optic. So that's like that's amazing right there. And unfortunately, my iPhone camera was not working with the solution for the oh, okay. what do you call that uh, continuation, continuation. Uh, continuation technology. But I I have I have it here working at it. You know, so yeah, it, 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 maybe you just have to allow some some kind of settings or something. Yeah, yeah. but you know, it just seemed like we it's really and really the other thing is that you know without all the conferences to go to all the little events that were, for instance, in the Bay Area, I have so much more time to actually focus on work and work on a product and work on you know the the growth and sales strategies versus uh, go out and and just meet people or worse to be honest for me investors because. Do you, do you think it's worth it to, like, right now go to Silicon Valley and, and you know, take part of all these little, you know, happenings? I think it could events? be fun for maybe if you're in your 20s. It could yeah. be fun in terms of discovering and so on. But I really do think right now you can discover all of it. Just, you know, if you have enough people on your LinkedIn, if you look at the news, uh, if you try other stuff, you need a lot of time in the back office to actually try the stuff and do the work, you know. I think too much, too many people. I would see them hopping from one event to the other. They wouldn't end up raising money because they were always there asking people, blah blah blah, pitching and pitching. But then, really, a lot of this company, I think, also have failed because they didn't put in enough work, right? And and I've seen, for instance, some conference of some friends of mine in San Diego. There was a little bit more quiet place. They have raised money from San Francisco, but they were like in San Diego, a little bit less events, a little bit more time to focus on the actual yeah. product and work. And and so I see the similarity. And I lived in San Diego; it's great, but 
as much as it felt like home, there's nothing like where you were originally from, that you were spending your first 14 years of your mm -hmm. life. So that's why I'm doing something similar to my friends in San Diego, just, just being in a quieter place. And Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right with it, that one. And that's why I wanted to ask what is your opinion in that one, because uh, that is, uh, it's not only a I thing, it's it's really now comes to all the startup hubs in, in the whole world. I mean, like, for example, Helsinki, uh, obviously it's not that big as, as, as the most of the places, but it's really like, well, you know it because you've been living there. Uh, and there's a lot of these small events and uh, mainly it kind of feels that it's, you know, Comic-Con stuff that people are addressing as, as some sort of like comic, you know, act, actors and et cetera. <laughs> so it kind of feels like it's the same just for the entrepreneurs. And, you know, they participate, they have these, like, it's uh, uh, just acting like an entrepreneur, but it's not actually doing the, the real work. What, what is the thing that makes you sure that you get to the, you know, investing rounds and all that. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, you have to balance, yeah. you know, you, maybe you can go a few times, go to a few select ones and it's it. For example, I do yeah. think Slush is a, a great event. I did go there when I first got back. It was yeah. definitely, I learned a lot. It was definitely very inspiring, but I was also yeah. like, you know, I wish Slush could have it more focus on bootstrap startups and oh, so yeah. more focus on allowing startups to meet to cross sell, allowing startups to meet distributors. I think right now it's still all the narrative is about, you know, you build a startup, VC is pitching. Uh, investments and so on and sure I think that's yeah. a track but for it's instance I saw industrial. SaaS Talk yeah it's SaaS industrial. Talk it's another event about SaaS and they had a bootstrap uh, founder stage which was great I was actually supposed to speak there as an MC which I got cough and I was destroyed I was standing there <laughs> listening but I couldn't speak um, but it was it, I think that's what we need to change the narrative a bit and I'm seeing quite a few other founders trying to trying to change it but it's uh, it's gonna take a lot of work still did you oh, yeah. did you see there yeah. is a micro conf it's a community for bootstrapped SaaS founders it's kind of a conference and there are a lot of like videos and there is community and all that good stuff and it's all around smaller bootstrapped SaaS founders so could be interesting could and be interesting. Yeah, think... organized I think I've so seen it. Where, where it looks like they're going to have one in, in Europe, in Lisbon, on the 1st and 3rd of, of mm -hmm. October. I always like to give a conference, like, a first go at least, you know, like, just to see how it is. Uh, for instance, I was invited to speak at Gitex Africa next May in Marrakesh, because I'm really interested in, like, Africa and uh, finding more distributors there. And, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I've also been trying to focus on conferences where I can go and speak. Um, a little that's maybe one perk of having those 27,000 followers on LinkedIn that, you know, if you do some good posts, they might have some, some decent marketing for free. And, uh, yeah, yeah that's been also my strategy in terms of event view and try to speak there as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, one question that I have, and I think we can start wrapping up. Uh, one question that I had is that you got your, uh, us citizenship, right? Yeah. So, uh, us has this weird policy where you are liable uh, like for like you're liable for tax uh, from global income from anywhere in the world D didn't that kind of like is, isn't that not very often yeah that's always still like there's a bunch of people who give up their US citizenship for that reason you know if you live in a country like Italy that has a double inca income taxation agreement and you know kind of whatever money you pay to Italy then it's, you know you don't have to pay double again to US within a certain threshold I've also heard there's like uh, talk, talks and discussions to try to get rid of that because I think it's the only country in the world that does it. And I think there's always been, there's always more and more American citizens that live abroad that have been, uh, you know, kind of, it's been, their life has been made too hard to live abroad. And also a lot of them gave up their citizenship. So, you know, you lose citizens with, with that. So it's a little, but uh, yeah, so far it's been fine, but uh, I do understand why some people keep that up at some point. Yeah. For me, also on the other side, when 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 there was like some threats of wars in Europe, I was like, I'm glad I had it because if it gets worse, it's like you can escape. I know to where US. to go. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's it's crazy and sad to think about this stuff. No, I'm, but it's like um, jokes aside, and I mean, it was not really a joke that cro that was the only time it crossed my mind to like yeah, go yeah. back. But it's also like you never know how it is in your life. Right now, I'm feeling very happy in Europe. Uh, but you know, you never know if of course something changes if you like going back and just having that option is, is just great.
Yeah, and and maybe you know uh, your business will grow and you will move maybe to US because of availability of maybe funding or whatever that is. It's it's really good to have multiple passports. You know, you can start collecting them at some point. But <laughs> I to That's be honest, the moment I got my I'm the moment I got that second passport, I felt like very lucky, but also I felt like you know I was like wow, I, there's some countries in Africa that you know people are not allowed allowed to go anywhere basically without a visa right so it, it's like uh it's really a word that is like so different right if you have a european passport your passport it's so much better if you have both even better but it's like it, it really made me feel like i hope one day in the future or maybe when we go to mars we'll just be citizens of mars and maybe one day in the future we'll be citizens of the world and that's it you know it's like uh just uh, create an evil uh even playing field uh not evil <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully not evil. Um, yeah you know yeah exactly just that that but of course we we still have as we don't you know we need to go there but there's still too many differences across uh certain people especially our older age you know uh they can get along well together like we can us eat but um <laughs> yeah let's see maybe maybe mark will just be citizens of mars so you guys going <laughs> yeah i i think well, it's gonna you know. be a one-way ticket <laughs> so you really have to think about it <laughs> i i need to ask my wife yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, if you are... Living... I'll wait for a few missions to go and maybe come back and I'll... I'll yeah. like once once they open Little Italy there, maybe then Vince, maybe then. <laughs> or if we know there's an asteroid coming over, then, then time to go. Yeah, of yeah, course. Then I'm going to be course, the first. Of course. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, we, can, um, cool. we can wrap up on this lovely note, you know, going to Mars and all that good stuff. Uh, Vince, yeah. it's been a tremendous pleasure. I learned a lot. It was really, really interesting to talk to you. I will definitely contact you on LinkedIn, reach out in future maybe if there is anything you can do. And uh, yeah, and if you need some help with the UX, UI, uh, I, can, I can try to help you as well if there is a need at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's definitely, let's definitely talk as well more one-on-one, try to share even some more and uh, yeah, look, look forward to, to connect also on LinkedIn. Michael, feel free to send a connection as well. Of oh, course, so, of yeah. course. We'll, we'll do that. Thank you. Fine. So um, thank, thank you, you very much. Kitos palio. <laughs> All right. All All right. right. <laughs> and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Take care. Bye.